a love letter to the entire franchise that mostly comes together as a great entry in the series. Let's dig into why. No spoilers ahead. Let me start by saying that the production design and visuals of this film are fantastic. It's mostly bleak, futuristic, with a lot of darkness permeating the screen, but never in the sense of like you can't see anything unless you're up in my crappy theater locally, then the projectors are terrible. But the space imagery being lots of black and white and oranges that really permeate through the color and the saturation and all, and just the designs of the sets, it just looked really good. And I thought Fede Alvarez did a really good job. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Cause his directing is phenomenal for the most part. He gets the franchise. He gets that Alien is about the things unseen. And that when you see them, you can't let up to keep that tension going. Building that sense of dread begins literally from the first frame because you know what's coming, you know what's gonna happen, you know what can't end well, but you still feel the tension constantly. He directs some really solid set pieces with new ideas that we've never seen before in the franchise, including some use of zero gravity, which I thought was ingenious. And I love to see if there's a follow-up to this, what else they can come up with. It just, some of it felt really new, some of it familiar, but never a retread in my opinion, other than the common things. However, I do have a little bit of issue when the actual scares come in. Once the dread is built up to and the scares start coming, there's an over-reliance on jump scares that I'm just not a huge fan of. And not just in the fact of, oh, there's something around the corner or, oh, somebody touches your shoulder and you jump. That stuff's here. But it's like, oh, all this crazy stuff's coming and a light flicks on and it's supposed to be a jump scare. But they use sound to emphasize it so there's this big boom whenever that happens. And it's like, ah, okay. I'm not scared because that was scary. I'm scared because that caught me off guard in a way that was cheap. And the cheap scare tactics get a little annoying by the end. Um, they do, it's not consistently bad. It's just sometimes it's over relied. There are some thick accents in the beginning of this where I was like, man, what did they say? Now, this is a constant issue I have on my channel. So it's possible that it's related to theaters at my screen. My friend who was with me said he had no issues at all. I definitely did for a few of the characters. So take that for what it's worth. But as usual, I can't hear without my subtitles. I think some people will struggle with the pacing of this one. Uh, because it really takes its time to get going. Uh, the first act is, I hesitate to use the word slow, but there's a lot more build up to the inciting incident than I thought there would be. And I was hoping that was because the it starts off really strong with two characters that are very interesting that you immediately feel for. One being the highlight, David Johnson, I think that's how you pronounce his name. It's the way he's able to flip a switch at the drop of a hat is just incredible. But the lead character after that, there's just less room for character growth and development in this, not like in the way there was for Ripley. It's very similar to the sense of like, there's enough to make you feel for people, but there's not enough to really make anybody stand out other than Andy. And that's kind of sad because in retrospect, it makes that slow beginning kind of not feel as important and like it could have been better served elsewhere in other parts of the movie, fleshing out some other ideas. But instead we spend it there with characters that ultimately feel like cliches to move the plot along. And that's okay, that's not always bad. The original Alien does that to supreme effect, but there's just enough there to where it's like these people are interesting. There's that, That's just not quite here in this one. There's also a really controversial choice that they use uh, deep fake AI technology with that is strangely ironic when you think about it. Just remember I said that, I won't spoil what it is. For how it's used and who it's used on, one, it was confusing as heck as it came up. Um, I was able to clarify it after the movie. But when you see it, you're just going to be like, mm, I don't know how I feel about this at large, but especially in the way it's being used is like, were you guys completely tone deaf here? And there's other actors that you could have used. That's going to split. Ultimately, I think it served the story fine, but it didn't have to be what it was or who it was. And that leans into the fan service territory where it was like, ah, maybe that was too much. But there are amazing references to the Alien franchise at large. Literally, I think I can pick out references or Easter eggs or some kind of connective visual thread to each and every one of the movies. Uh, and I mean each and every one of the movies, even the lesser ones. And that's pretty cool to remix ideas from all of them in a completely new context 
and not actually just retread plot points from each of them, but create something new, I find it to be pretty amazing. And as a casual Alien fan, the fact that I was able to catch them, I did rewatch all the movies earlier this year. It was special, and I'm hoping more people are able to pick up on that love letter aspect of this. One of the things I was most excited about was the practical effects that they touted as like bringing back the people from Aliens to do all the practical effects. And let me say something, because this is kind of a weird thing I have to explain. Not that any of them were bad, I was expecting them to be a little bit more wow inducing than what they were. They look really good, but nothing out of like John Carpenter's the thing where you're like, that is just blowing me away. How mind bogglingly perfect that looks, how incredible, how did they achieve that? There's nothing like that. And maybe it's because there's been so many, many alien movies. It's just more of the same. There are some new ideas here, especially with the practical effects, but at the same time, it's interesting. This film blends CGI and practical effects among the best of them. So the, the visual effects, CGI, and the special effects, the practical stuff come together so seamlessly that you actually forget about them. And that is probably the highest compliment or one of the highest compliments that you can give these kinds of effects in movies is that they're blended so well you don't notice, you forget after a while. It's just part of the world, part of the immersion. Speaking of immersion, there's a couple plot points about uh, temperature in the movie and temperatures rising in the movie. Um, that's not really like a spoiler or anything like that. And it was hilarious because the AC was out in our particular theater, I'm telling y'all, our theater. Me and my friend kept joking with each other that it was part of the immersion experience and it's wild marketing or whatever because the AC was out. Anyway. I think in the wake of Alien Covenant underperforming, this is probably the best Alien movie we could have gotten that isn't Ridley Scott's Prometheus, uh, you know, the third in that series. Those films aren't ignored, uh, which I was very happy to see, very happy uh, to have hope that we eventually get a direct sequel to Alien Covenant and that br finishes bridging the gap between that and the original Alien. But that's not what this is. And I had to get those expectations aside. However, what it is, I respect highly. I think it wears the influences of the entire franchise on its sleeves. Even games like Alien Isolation, there's some elements in here that I was able to catch and read about afterwards. It says something when a new filmmaker is able to come into a franchise make such a positive stamp and hopefully reinvigorate interest so that we can get more expansions in the future such as sequels, prequels, video games, comics, and all that. And if you want to see more from Alien, the best thing you can do is go see Alien Romulus. I am so glad they were smart enough to pull this from being a Hulu exclusive and put it in theaters because that's where it should be experienced. They made that mistake with Prey and Prey should have been in theaters Luckily, they listened with Alien Romulus as actually I think this is a better movie than Prey. And I'm hoping this means we can finally either get third entry in that prequel trilogy or we can get what I would call Alien Returns and get a legacy sequel with Sigourney Weaver and Michael Bean and maybe even uh, an, an actress for Newt to reprise their roles, uh, do it like the cryogenic chambers, whatever, and they messed up and they aged and we could ignore Alien 3 and Alien Resurrection, which are travesties. I said what I said. But that being said, this is a pretty predictable Alien movie for the most part. By the end when the credits roll, it feels kind of safe, like status quo hasn't been shaken really too much. It is more of the same, but executed super well. However, I do remember distinctly thinking, like when I thought the movie was over, I was like, man, I'm, I'm a little disappointed. Like. That's it. That's all we get. Like it was cool and all, but, and then it's not over the third, the last part of the third act happens and it will make your skin crawl. There's one of those scenes in here that you're just going to be like, Oh buddy. And then it's terrifying for the next 10 minutes. And that elevated the entire thing for me because they took risks and it was also a reference. And I appreciate the boldness and the creepiness and the action in that direction. I'm glad to see that Alien as a f movie franchise lives. This isn't what I wanted. I wanted a Covenant sequel. I still hope we get a Covenant sequel, but this is a step in the right direction of getting Alien back in the mainstream where it makes money again and we can get spinoffs in the future. I'm looking forward to the TV series. I think it comes out next year. I give Alien Romulus four out of five stars. Is this part where I can make Star Trek jokes about Romulus? No. Well, in that case, just remember, always look for the good.